Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the training call tonight. Um, it's Thursday, October 25th, 2018. I want to welcome you to the, <coughs> excuse me, Avon Team New Vision training call. I am so glad that you decided to spend your evening with me tonight. I promise you I will um, move very swiftly through this training tonight because I do respect your time and hopefully that we will be out of here right on time tonight. Okay. So tonight's training, we're going to talk about event marketing. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that some of you may have, um, you know, tried event marketing at some time or another, but I can tell you that event marketing can really, really catapult your business to the next level. And I, when I was building my business in the beginning, when I was first building my business, I started building my business using all types of events. I used, uh, you know, uh, job fairs. I used all types of craft fairs, all types of events and everything. Any, anywhere where I could actually set up a table, I took advantage of that event because every event that you participate in, you have the opportunity to get your business in front of other people and you have an opportunity to grow your business. So that's why event marketing can really, really help grow your business if you stay consistent with it. Now, you might be asking the question, of course, why? And I just basically went through and explained to you the reason why. The reason why you really want to take advantage of event marketing is because, number one, it gives your business exposure, especially if you are in a community and you are not, if you're mainly just working your business online and you're not doing any offline marketing, it gives you great exposure for those people in the community. So, of course, with that exposure, it helps to grow your business. Another reason why is that you have an opportunity to network. You have an opportunity to network with all of the other vendors there. So, in addition to um, gaining new contacts and gaining new leads, you have the opportunity to network with all of the other vendors there where you can exchange information where they may end up becoming a part of your business either through, um, either through the customer avenue or through joining your team. So, of course, with all of the exposure, with all of the new contacts and all of the new leads, that grows your business by leaps and bounds through gaining new customers and new recruits. Now, the next question you may be asking yourself is, how exactly do you find vendor events? Well, vendor events are very, very easy to find, okay? The first place you, wanna, you want to look for a particular event would be on Google. Just go to Google and type in, um, you know, networking events or, or craft fair events in my area and Google will bring up everything that you want to, uh, you, you're looking for. Another avenue is eventlister.com, craftlister.com. Now I must tell you, I went on eventlister.com today and they do charge a fee. I do think that specifically for um, most people who are really mainly doing a lot of craft events. If they have a lot of, you know, if, if you're a very creative person and you're really creating a lot of things, I think those particular sites, when it comes to uh, participating on that site, um, there is a fee. However, there is a trial. You can go ahead and sign up for it under the trial. I think there's a, a one week trial or a two week trial or something like that. But I would say take advantage of that. Another way to find events is through Eventbrite, okay? Eventbrite has all types of events. Just go in to eventbrite.com and just type in vendor events or networking events, and you'll be amazed at what comes up. Another website is festivalnet.com. Another one is fairsandfestivals.net, myfairsandfestivals.com. You can even go to Craigslist. You, craigslist.com or the either craigslist.org. Facebook also has vendor groups. Now, I am in a couple of those um, 
those groups, those Facebook vendor groups. So all you have to do is on Facebook, go to the group area and just type in vendor groups, okay? And those groups will pop up. You want to make sure that the group is specifically for your area, okay? So of course, if you're in the Atlanta area, then of course you type in vendor groups for the Atlanta area or Georgia. If you just joined the call, please uh, please be kind and mute yourself out because it's interfering with the recording. Thank you so very, very much. Um, another place to find vendor events would be through your community, your local county, um, county, and, county and state fairs. Also through the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce has a lot of um, listings that will tell you basically everything that's going on within your, your area. So also with schools and colleges, if you call around and contact a lot of the schools and the colleges in your area, they generally have all types of career fairs, fall festivals, um, spring festivals, all type of events going on at a lot of the, the colleges and the universities in your area. The Department of Labor, I, 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 <laughs> I honestly built my business using the Department of Labor, uh, using the job fairs. Now, one thing that I love about the Department of Labor is that the events are free. <laughs> They're sponsored by the Department of Labor. They are absolutely free. So all you have to do is go to the Department of Labor website and then just click on events and it'll tell you specifically where the events are located in the area. Okay, so those would be more for recruiting. Okay, also, I know a lot of people don't use the newspaper anymore, but if you're still using the newspaper, sometimes um, companies do advertise in the newspaper. Bridal shows would be um, another way that you can find out about other events as well. Um, you've got a lot of your churches. Um, sometimes the malls have uh events i know like for halloween most malls do trick-or-treat night uh, for trick-or-treaters at the local malls and then also don't forget about your nonprofit organizations such as the ymca the ywca the lions club the shriners the kiwanis and other sororities all of those specific organizations are um available for you to tap into to find out uh, where they are actually located and when the events are actually scheduled so that you can keep your calendar totally booked and grow your business. Now, once you have found out exactly where all of the events are, I'm sure the next question you're asking is, well, what's next? What do I do next? Well, here are a few things that you want to consider when you are growing and you are using events to grow your business. You want to make sure that when you contact the organization, always ask, do they allow more than one consultant per company? The worst thing that you want to do is get there and you find that there are two companies there. Now, if it's a huge event where they are expecting thousands and thousands of people, then it's normal for them to allow more than one consultant per company. But if it's just a small event, then you want to make sure that you are going to be the only consultant there for, um, for Avon. The next thing you want to consider is how many years has the event been established? Because if it's a new, fairly new event, those events are generally are not, <laughs> you're not going to have as many people to attend those events. So I generally always like to participate in, a, in events that's been, um, they've been around for at least three years, okay? The first year, you know, and sometimes they can give you, you know, um, you know, false information and tell you that they had so many people, but that's generally just to sell you a table. So you wanna just kind of check on it. And if they tell you that if, is their second event or if it's their first event, always ask them, well, do you have a Facebook page where I can go to your Facebook page and look at some of the, uh, the photos from the event? Ask them for their website if they have any photos posted where you can see um, exactly how, you know, how many people actually attended that event if they are very, very new.
So I always look for organizations that have been around for at least or have done these events for at least three or more years, okay? Then another thing you want to ask them is how many people are expected to attend? You don't want to attend an event where it's going to be, and, and they don't have any idea as far as how many people are going to be there. You do want to make sure that they give you a pretty decent number. Now, I, I can't really tell you a number specific. You just pretty much have to kind of use your own personal discretion when it comes to that. Another thing you want to consider is, is it indoors or outdoors? Just remember and keep in mind that if it's an outdoor event, you have to deal with the elements. So if it's rain, once if it rains, once you pay your, your booth fee or your table fee or your registration fee, if it rains, chances are you probably won't get your money refunded, okay? And also if they're doing something outdoors, then ask if they will also provide tents for, the, for you as well. So uh, that brings me to my next thing to consider is do they provide tables and chairs, okay? You wanna make sure that they will provide it because the worst thing that, you, one thing you don't wanna do, and I did this a lot in the past setting up at events. I participated in a lot of events where they did not provide the table and the chairs. So therefore, in addition to you lugging all of your tools and lugging all of your products, you got to lug along a table and you also have to bring, or bring your own chairs. So make sure that they will be providing the tables and the chairs. And also, if it's an outdoors event, ask if they will also be providing tents as well. Here's another thing you want to consider. Do they advertise the event to the public? Because if they are advertising this event to the public, then of course you're going to gain a lot more exposure and you can expect more people to be in attendance. So you definitely want to make sure that they are doing some sort of advertising to drive more people to the event, okay? Um, and then number, I think I got my numbers here wrong. This should be number seven. The next question is you want to find out how much does it cost? Now, some of these organizations can put a big ticket on these events. <clears throat> now, I personally, you have to make up in your mind what you're going to use as your own budget. But for me, I honestly would not go over $35. That's just me personally, okay? But I have heard of some of these organizations charging up to $200, $250. That's a little bit steep for me personally, um, but you have to decide what your budget is. But just keep this in mind that the more people that are expected at the event, the greater the investment is going to be. So if you're going to, like we have a huge fair here in Georgia called the Perry Fair, down in Perry, Georgia. And it's a huge, huge event every year. So they may charge a little bit more for that particular event. And I'm not exactly sure exactly how much they charge, but the last time one of my team members participated in the event um, there, I think it was like $75, but she was able to split the, the fee with another rep in the area. So therefore she was able to just pay, you know, half the, the fee. Okay. And another thing you want to take into consideration, always ask one of your team members to attend the event with you. Because keep in mind, when you are building your business, you want to make sure that you're taking your team members along with you so that they can get hands-on training, okay? And then also consider your budget. How much are you willing to invest? You have to keep in mind that your investment will include the cost of the table at the event. It's also going to include any type of um, business tools that you want to take, any samples that you're going to take, and also products. If you want to sell products for cash and carry, you've got to start you know, setting aside funds to be able to take, um, to invest in your business and invest in the event so that you can continue to grow your business, okay? So you also want to fill your calendar with sev several events per month. Now, this is the key to bringing a lot of success and a lot of abundance to your business. Don't just do one. 
when you find one, I would say, you know, get in the habit of booking at least one per week, okay? If you can't do one per, me, per week, at least try to do at least two per month, okay? If you consistently kept four events on your calendar, you can really, really start to really see your numbers grow because you're meeting a lot of people and you're getting in front of a lot of people, okay? And I always suggest, number 10, that if you do not have the money to invest in these events, book them on your calendar anyway and just go to network with the vendors. Now, I met hundreds of people this, this way, okay? This is a powerful way to get out there and start networking with other people in other companies, okay? So even if you are brand new to the business and you are growing your business in the, in the baby stages, Find out where these events are located and get out there and start networking. Take your brochures with you, take your samples with you, take your business cards with you, and just go table to table. That's an open event where nobody's going to stop you um, from talking to people or prospecting people. So this is a prime, prime targeted place and location for you to meet new potential um, prospects. Now, the next thing you probably want to know is how exactly do you prepare for the event, okay? Well, the first thing you want to do is get yourself ready, okay? You want to make sure that you have the products and you have your display ready, okay? If you don't have anything to display, ask and network with some of the other um, representatives in your area if you can borrow a couple of things from them like some of the representatives may have a tablecloth that you can use some of them may have some type of um you know um some some little things that you can set up on your table just keep in mind most representatives are open and they will share with you but you have to open up your mouth and you have to start talking to other people okay so get yourself ready get your products ready and get your display ready Number two, purchase your tablecloth, preferably with the company logo, okay? Now, if you go to Town & Country Printing, you can buy um, a tablecloth, a tablecloth for about, I think they're like $29.95, somewhere around in there. But just keep in mind that every dollar that you invest in your business it's tax deductible. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Even though, you know, you're putting the money up front, you'll be able to write that off on your taxes because it's part of what you need as a tool to grow your business. Number three, purchase a sign with the company logo. There again, you can find these also at Town & Country Printing, okay? This helps to make your table much more attractive, um, and it makes it much more visible and people will automatically know who you are and what company you actually represent. Number four, have a basket of goodies, okay? They always say that when you've got the honey, you know, honey always draws the bees in, okay? So if you've got something sweet on the table, I promise you people will start coming up to your table just because they see the sweets on the table. So make sure that you've got some peppermint, or some Hershey's Kisses or some type of sweets or something on your table in a little bowl where it's easily visible. So as people come to your table and they start picking up the little candies and everything, this is prime time for you to talk to them and get their information, okay? Number five, you wanna order inexpensive products to sell for cash and carry. Now, when I say inexpensive products, like we're coming up on Christmas. So you want to order like some of the little small hand creams or maybe some of the lip balms. I don't personally encourage you to invest a lot of money in products to have to sell there. Maybe just in the little dollar fifty size trial size products. That would be ideal because those products sell quickly. And so when people see that they're inexpensive, you're, you'll be able to sell products much faster and much easier. Now, I can honestly tell you that if you've got the Skin So Soft bath oil, somebody's going to ask you for that bath oil. So if you order any other product to sell or carry, make sure you've got the Skin So Soft bath oil because that's one product that, a regular size product that will definitely move from your table, okay? 
Number six, make sure that you've got your business tools, such as your brochures, your samples, your business cards, and your recruiting pamphlet. Those recruiting pamphlets can be ordered um, in the web office. If you go and log in to um, your account and you look under your business tools under recruiting, you'll see those uh, recruiting pamphlets there. So you want to make sure that you have those. Number seven, you want to make sure that you download and you have the cash app on your phone, or you want to make sure that you get the square to accept debit and credit card payments. Now, um, I've even gotten to the point now that when I, when I, um, when I printed out my invoices for my customers, I just send them a cash app, a notice through cash app, how much is due. So there's a, there's a section on request on, on cash app where you can request money. And there's a, a, a section there, a little tab there where you send money. So I just send a request out to my customers and my customers just send me money through cash app. Now that's pretty much how I collect all my money for my cut from my customers now. So once I collect all the money, I just go drop the order off. So we don't even have to worry about exchanging money like that anymore. So make sure you've got the cash app or the square where you can accept some form of, you know, um, electronic payments such as debit and credit card. Okay. Number eight, you want to make sure that you create or print a sign that says we're hiring or ask about fundraising. Okay. Or inquire about a brochure party. If you have these signs on your table and they're bright and they're visible, People start reading, and, and a lot of times when you're talking to them, you may even forget it, but they see that you do fundraising, and they see that you also do brochure parties, or they may ask you about joining your business. So make sure that your signs are visible and they are speaking for you, because again, a lot of times, lots of people start crowding your table and when they see these signs, they will approach you and they will ask you about it before you would even have the time to even bring it up, okay? Number nine, here's another thing how you want to prepare. Just make sure that you don't clutter your table with too much information and products, okay? This is a no-no. And I put a couple of photos here just so that you can see this. Now, this here, I know it's kind of hard to actually see it, but I don't necessarily like this. I honestly think that they should have had... Um, um, a tablecloth, but I'm sure that they went on and used whatever they had. But I do like the fact that it's very neat, okay? You see how the brochures are spread out on the table here? You want to make sure that your brochures and everything are spread out very neat. Now, see here how they made their own little um, um, poster board here that says Avon. They just took a black poster board and probably just cut out the words Avon. And then here in the middle, they're probably using this, this, um, this basket here as a drawing. And that's another thing you want to make sure that you have a basket or something that you're going to use as a drawing so that you can get people to leave their names and phone numbers for you. Okay. So um, I would also advise you to use a separate table or some type of shelf to display your inventory. And the reason why that, again, is so that you won't keep your table so cluttered. The only thing I would honestly have on my table would be, you know, like a giveaway basket that you're going to give away and also your basket or your little bowl for your candy and spread your literature out on your table and make sure that you have the other signs. That way you are not cluttering your table, okay? Because when you start piling too many products on your table, people, sometimes when you have a very, very crowded event, people can start pulling from your table and you won't even know that products are missing. So you want to make sure that your products are located behind you on some type of little shelf, and but it's easily visible, but make sure that it's set away so that people won't walk off with your merchandise, okay? Number 11, you want to make sure that you use clipboards, okay? You can go to the dollar store and get these little clipboards. You can use that. Make sure you've got extra pens. Take lots of pens because people do walk away from from the table with your ink pens. So you wanna make sure that you have a contact list 
where people can leave their names, their names along with their email and their phone numbers so that you can follow up with them after event, after the event, okay? And another thing you want to make sure that you do to prepare for the event is start visualizing having a successful event. See yourself being, you know, the top person there where people are just crowding your table. You'll be amazed at what will happen when you start to use the power of visualization and see yourself there before it actually happens. So that's one thing that you definitely want to make sure that you do is make sure that you start seeing yourself as a success being there. Okay. Now, here's how you're going to get leads and contacts when you are there. The worst thing you want to do when you get there, I see this so many times when I go to events. I see people just sitting at the table, just looking around at people. Like people are just going to automatically come to you. Be assertive. Be assertive. Smile. When people see you smile, have a friendly, friendly look. Be very friendly to people and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Felita. I'm an independent sales representative with Avon. How are you? Okay, smile, talk to people, be friendly with them. Nobody wants to, I, and I tell you, I, the, the place where I go, I go to, um, on my daily walk in the morning, I go to a, Lee, a park called Lee Street Park over here in Jonesboro. And they have vendor events in the morning. And it amazes me how the vendors will get there They'll put out all of this stuff on the table and they just sit there. They don't speak to you. They don't say anything. For me, I'm the type of person, if you don't even say hello to me, I'm not going to spend my cash with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me. I spend my money with people who I see who is open and friendly. So smile, be friendly, introduce yourself, offer your business card and a free product sample. So make sure that you give, have your business cards there and give them, give them away just like they're water. Business cards should be leaving your hands like, like wildfire. Every person who you come in contact, you need to be, hello, my name is Felita. Hello, my name is Susan. Let me give you a free business card. Give you a business card along with the free sample. People love free samples. So make sure that even if you don't have any products there, you have tons of free samples that you can take with you because the samples is what will draw the people in, okay? Another way to get leads is to ask questions. Ask them, who's your Avon rep, okay? Who do you know um, that needs to earn extra money, okay? Um, what organization are you a part of that needs to, that need to raise funds? Okay. Or would you like to be added to my email list so that you can be contacted for all of the specials that we have going on? So these, you want to ask these questions to people so that you can get them to engage with you. That's what it's all about. Cause you have to keep in mind, people buy from people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So if I know, if I, even if I don't know you, if I like you and you have a very, very friendly, um, um, you know, if you're very friendly with me, then I'm more receptive to those people. And I'm sure that that's what the majority of the people, um, how most people generally buy from most people anyway. And also make sure that you have that drawing for a product give giveaway. You saw in the previous um, uh, slide, I showed you where they had a little basket. Now, if you have a basket, you can go to the dollar store, get you a little basket. And if you've got some extra products just sitting around the house, Make that basket real cute. Just put your few products in there and make the basket real cute. Put your little bow on there and make it really, really pretty and use that basket as your raffle. So you tell everybody that you're going to be giving away that basket for free. And be sure to mention to them that there's no obligation to buy and they don't have to be present to win. Now, this always draws them to you because people love to get something free. So you got to remember when you are providing value, you have to be able to put something out before you can actually receive and, and uh, more business starts to come back to you. Okay. Now, here's another key after, after the event. Okay, after the event, um, you can decide if you want to pull the name for the winner 
um, after the event, while you're at the event, or you can just wait until the next day. It's totally left up to you. Now, like that basket, since you're going to be drawing the basket, you can tell the customers um, or tell the prospects there that you're going to be drawing the names at the end of the event. Okay, so even if they are not present, and most of the time, people will hang around just to see if their name is actually going to be drawn. So that's why you want to tell them you're going to you're going to be pulling the names after the event. So it's up to you if you want to wait until the event is over and go ahead and pull, and then you can announce the winner then, or you can wait until the next day and just call the person and let them know that they are the prize winner. Okay. Another tip after the event, you want to make sure that you follow up by email and thank them for connecting, okay? Let them know that you've added them to your contact list for specials and opportunities that may come available, okay? So this is basically what you're going to do when you get back to your home office. You're just going to go ahead and add their, their email into your contact list so that they can start getting email communications from Avon so that they can have the contact um, um, information, get those automated emails from Avon, okay? And um, you want to make sure that you follow up by phone within 24 hours to everyone that you personally talk to. Now, this is a key. If you tell somebody you're going to call them, be a person of your word and make sure that you call them, okay? Now, if you tell them you're going to email them, then email them. Okay, but just be very, very selective with what, how you communicate with people because people are going to hold you to your word. Now, if you don't call them like you told them you're going to call them, the first thing they're going to say is, I knew she wasn't going to call. That's the reason why I don't buy Avon no more anyway because all the people that I talk to, that's what I generally go through. So you want to make sure, be selective with your words. So you got to make a decision. If you're going to call them after the event, or if you're gonna email them, or either if you're gonna send them a text, okay? So just make sure you communicate with them or ask them what would be the best way for you to follow up with them, okay? So again, what I always do as well, I also add their names, their phone numbers. I set up a group in my Gmail contact list, okay? And let's say for instance, it's an event this weekend. So I'll say craft fair, um, event October 27th, and I'll set that up in a group in my Gmail contact list, and I'll put all of the people that I met at that event under that, that group contact list, okay? Anything that you spoke to them about specifically, you want to make sure that you notate that, okay? So you'll turn out your contact list over on the back and make a note on the back. Spoke to Susan about you know, joining. Or on your contact list, if you've got, you know, three columns, you've got a column for the name, you've got a column for your emails, you've got a column for your, um, your telephone numbers, you can have a fourth column where they can tell you if they're interested in becoming an Avon customer, if they're interested in joining your team, or if they're interested in fundraising events, or if they're interested in doing a, a brochure uh, party for you. Okay, so just ask them to indicate what they would like to do, or you need to know specifically, um, you know, how you need to notate that. Okay, um, so yeah, make sure that you add their contact information not only to your web office, but you want to make sure you add their contact list to your Gmail list so that you can stay in contact with them as well. Okay. All right, so here are some photo images of some things that I found online of what some other Avon um, reps did around the, uh, around the U.S. Um, I like this one here. This particular representative looked like she went all out to really dress this up. Now, I'm sure that this table cover was probably provided. As a matter of fact, this looks like similar to what the Department of Labor uses. Um, theirs looks similar to this. Um, I, I don't even know if town and country carry these banners anymore, but um, it would be good for you to have a banner that you could use 
because it really, really, presentation is everything at these events. I promise you presentation is everything. Now this might have been an event where she was setting up to sell products, okay? Now, I personally don't invest in a lot of products like this to take around and to sell. It's, that's a personal decision that you have to make, okay? If this is what you want to do, then I say go for it. And you can see here, this representative, she used a lot of products here on her table as well. You can see a few of her books right here, but she has like little baskets where she's got the Skin So Soft Bath Oil right here. She mainly has the body spray, okay? Um, looks like she's got some products here and a few products here as well. Um, this representative here, she just has like a little, uh, I, I don't know exactly what this is, but it looks like she just went to the dollar store. To me, this doesn't look as professional, but I'm sure she used what she had and she made it do what it do. What it do okay. <laughs> All right. So this representative here, you can see here how she has a little basket here. Make sure you have some type of basket or something that you're going to take with you um, to put the people's um, information in. Or if you're just going to use just one main contact list where everybody can put their information on there. Okay. Um, I thought this was a neat little idea right here. This representative used a little clear glass, like a little champagne glass or wine glass. I'm sure she got these little glasses at the dollar store and she put like glimmer sticks in here is it looks like she got some type of shredding or something like that in here where she put glimmer sticks and some lipsticks in here i thought that was a very very clever little idea that she did there now here this is what i was talking about make sure that if you're selling products and you're going to have products to sell Make sure that the products are not covering your table, but you've got like a little separate shelf that you can put on the side and you can store your, your products on the side um, for selling if you have a lot of products available to sell, okay? This particular representative here, she just put her little table tablecloth across here. She has her brochures here on this side, and then she has her products set up on this side, and then she has like her little contact um, book here where she has it open for people to leave their information. Okay. Now this table doesn't look inviting. You want to make sure that your table looks inviting. Even if you can go to the dollar store and get some balloons, balloons will attract everybody. Okay. When people see pretty balloons, even if you got two balloons to attach it to your table, the balloons itself is going to attract people to your table. It's just something about balloons that just makes things look very festive and um, it just draws people to your table. Okay, so you got to kind of think outside the box ways to actually bring the people in. Okay, now here's another representative. She really invested in her business where she has the Avon tent and she has a really, really nice um, tablecloth here as well. So she looks like she was set. This is an outdoor event where she was selling. Uh, she has her product set up here and I'm sure she has like, it's kind of hard to see exactly what she has on the table, but she doesn't have a lot of products. It looks like she might have a little, a basket or something. Then she has a basket for her, um, her sweets. Um, and then she has her little Avon signs here. You want to make sure that you've got the Avon signs because that's really, really important. Okay. Now I think this was actually like at a uh, home for the holidays or something like that. It might've been even at an Avon meeting or something, but this was just like an, uh, um, like a fall event. You can tell with the decorations and everything here, this was like a Halloween event or something like that. Now I really like how clean this representative has her. She used like a pink uh, tablecloth and then she just used a, the little Avon throw over hers and she has like the little signs set up in the back here and then she has her materials across the table and you see right here she has her her sweets um, right here on the edge of the table so that people won't have to cross over her now I personally would not put mine right there I would put my sweets right here in the middle of the table and the reason why is because it's going to make them reach over to connect with you, okay? If it's right here, 
they're going to take the can and they're going to keep sliding. Okay, so you want to make sure that uh, at least if they're going to take your candy or if they're going to take your samples and it's free for them um, to just, you know, take away with them, you want to make sure that you have some type of contact where you can get some type of contact from them. Okay, some information from them. Okay, and I'm sure that this was probably like a holiday event because this representative here has a lot of products set up on her table. Okay, now again, if you are new to the business, I don't encourage you spending a lot of money doing this. Just go with your brochures, take a bunch of samples with you, take your business cards, go to the dollar store, get you a couple of really cute balloons check around and see if there's some representatives in your area where you can actually borrow the table color from you. Now you see here, this representative here, she did a little um, enter to win the gift, okay? Now I don't know if she was, it looks like she has a price on this little um, bear. Like if you have a little, what was one of our little fundraising bears? I can't remember the name of it. If you wanna raffle him off, you can use that. But this was probably just a little cute little box from the dollar store where um, she probably just cut a hole right here in the top of the box here. And she just made her little sign to go on top of it, enter to win a gift. Or if you've got a basket, just say enter to win the gift basket. Okay. And then, of course, here, here's another outdoor event uh, with a cute little pink, um, um, pink tent here. And then of course, see how neat she has her set up here. I think they did an excellent job. She even has her Avon banner up here. And then they have their products set up really, really nice around the table, okay? And then of course, these last two photos down here, um, it just looks like she's got a combination. She's got a lot of products. Looks like she's got two tables full. She's got a table on this right side and then she's got her tables filled with merchandise. And make sure, again, I wanna, I can't express these signs enough. Make sure that you have the signs that indicate um, that we are hiring, ask me about fundraising opportunities, and um, inquire about a brochure party, okay? All right, so that's gonna be the end of this presentation. So now you can go ahead and unmute your, yourself and i'm going to open it up for q and a and see if anybody has any questions or anything that wasn't clear that i need to um just kind of clarify um before we close the call out tonight so go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and ask a question if you have any questions uh felita this is joyce yes miss joyce uh yes uh, you had said that uh, you don't usually have a lot of product to sell. Uh, so when you're at the event, I know that you're prospecting and so forth. So since you don't have product to sell, you're just giving like brochures and samples? Correct. I just okay. take a bunch of samples, okay? Even if I'll... you pay for the event? Huh? Even if you pay for the event? Right, because see, you got to keep in mind that you're still going to have those contacts. You'll be able to follow up with those contacts after the event. So they right. will be prospective customers. But now, this is just the way that I run my business. I'm not telling you to not do that. Yes, I know. If you have merchandise and you have products to sell, take them, because that's a good way to increase your sales. Um, so yeah, it's just that I, I've never been the one to invest in a bunch of products. Just, I've never liked having a bunch of products sitting on my shelf. Okay. Right. I'm just one of those people that believe in, if it don't make dollars, it just don't make sense. And to me, a whole bunch of products sitting on my shelf is not making me any money. So if I'm going to plan for some events, then I'm going to, I'll probably invest in some of like the little trial size products a bunch of those to take with me but i'm just personally not one to invest in a whole bunch of products okay right. mm -hmm. but i would say if that's what you want to do you got to really have a way to make your money back okay so right. you look at it as you'll make it on the front end or you'll make it on the back end so the back end would be you may uh potentially have customers who may order from your website 
or may end up joining your team. So if you have products that you want to sell, by all means, go ahead and take your merchandise and sell it. Okay. Well, I actually agree with you on not having all of that product. However, because I am trying to uh, get sales, make money back. So I, this 24, campaign 24 and 25, I was thinking about getting product to sell. So that's a decision that I have to make. Right, right. This is your business. So you, you operate your business the way you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. make sure you have lots of samples. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Lipstick samples, fragrance samples, skincare samples. Take lots of samples with you. Yes. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You got a question, Miss Allison? I just wanted to add to something that you just said. Okay. I heard a call with Lisa Wilbur yesterday, and Lisa is one of Avon's um, executive, platinum executive leaders um, from New Hampshire, I believe. Mm -hmm. But she said that she's built up her amazing business by going to events and only bringing three products. She says she only brings Skin So Soft bath oil, deodorants, and hand creams. Mm -hmm. Because anything else, if she's in a mud season and she's trying to carry all these boxes of stuff, if stuff hits the ground, she's able to pick it up, wipe it off, and still sell it. Exactly. So she says she doesn't invest a whole bunch of money in pretty stuff. She'll have her customers sit down and shop and walk them through placing that order right then and there at her web store. And she knows that by doing that, she's teaching them how to be a customer for life and come back on their own. But no, um, she just says she relies on those three products and that's helped her to build this business all the time, all this time. I agree because you can never go wrong with that skin so soft bath oil. You can never go wrong with that. So even if you order the Skin So Soft bath oil that in the squirt bottle, that yes. alone, that would be an excellent product to take with you. As a matter of fact, I had already mentioned like the little trial sizes. The trial sizes would consist of like your hand creams, um, you know, even your lip balm. Sometimes you can take the deodorants, okay? The deodorants do sell as well because people will ask you about the deodorants. So just be, you know, like what Allison just said, the Skin So Soft, Bath Oil, the deodorants, and hand creams. Those are three products that you can invest in to, to um, have available to sell at your product, but just at your, at your event. But just keep in mind, it's an investment. So you're going to have to put this money up front. And of okay. course, you know, when you invest in the event itself, you know, hopefully you will, you know, you'll sell enough, you'll have enough cash and carry where you'll be able to make your money back from the event. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I have a, I have a question. Hey, Arthur. Hey ahead. there. Um, so I did an event uh, two weeks ago, uh, just about, and I got 14 names of people who were interested in either getting a brochure or getting information about being a rep. Uh -huh. And I followed up with them um, a few times now. And I, I'm really, I keep getting radio silence. Uh -huh. So at what point should I um, not, you know, move on or should I, should I continue to, say, you know, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Yeah, this is Arthur with Avon. You know, just wanted to follow up from, you know, meeting you at the flea market a few weeks ago. Is there anything I, get, I could get for you? Because I've sent everybody, they all took the current brochure, which was the 22 brochure, mm -hmm. and they all, um, you know, gave me their numbers to contact them, and I've done that, and I've just gotten, I, I personally have not seen anything from them. Okay. Okay. Now, did you get an email address from them? Uh, no, the majority of the people that I uh, got information from either left their email out or uh, they simply preferred the text message. Okay. So the I, phone would, call. I would suggest leave them alone because you've already c communicated with them. I would suggest leave them alone, but in the future, make sure you ask for email and phone number, email okay. and phone number. And that way you can let the automated emails continue to do the work for you. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, sometimes when you consistently call people, they're just totally ignoring your calls most of the time anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if they yeah. were really, really interested in it, in, in it, they would definitely follow up with you. Okay. So I just say if I've contacted them, you know, two times, definitely by the third time and I don't get a response, that's it for me. <laughs> so I'll put okay. them on the, yeah, I'll put them on my email, go into my web office, add their email address to my email contact list. And just let the emails do the do the talking for you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Now, author added something here in the chat box. He said the ladies' auxiliaries are also great for the local firehouses around this time as well. Arthur, can you tell us a little bit about that since you've um, already done that before? Yes, uh, absolutely. So basically in my area, I'm in Wilmington, Delaware, and in uh, where I live, within about five to 10 minutes from me, I actually have about two or three firehouses. And what a lot of people don't know is that each firehouse, on top of raising money uh, through mailers, such as, you know, people will normally get a, uh, a mailer to raise money or funds for the firehouse, each firehouse has what's known as a ladies auxiliary, which is uh, a social group, but also a group for young ladies and women in the community to put on events to help uh, raise funds for the firehouse and to give back to the community. Uh -huh. So uh, one thing I've personally done uh, is through Facebook, I've gone through and I've actually messaged each of the local firehouses in my area and I've asked them you know are you all doing uh, a fall event or are you doing a holiday event uh, for the upcoming holiday season uh, most in my area actually aren't uh -huh. however they are also the ones who if you wanted to do a bingo night they would be the people you would go to uh -huh. so I'm working with them on doing an Avon bingo night Okay, um, cool. So it's it's definitely something, if you haven't gone that avenue, I would highly suggest it. Okay, okay. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because I never would have even thought to, would have been thought to even go that route. So thank yeah, you. I, yeah, thank you for sharing that. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, okay. All right, does anybody else have any questions before we close the call out tonight? Okay, well, everybody's quiet, so that tells me that there are no other questions. Well, I want to thank you all for attending the call tonight, and I want to encourage you to stay connected and stay engaged, okay? So next week, everybody should be participating in the fundraising, the corporate fundraising um, training on next Thursday at 8 p.m. So if you have not registered for the event, be sure to register for the event so that um, you'll, you'll be able to take advantage of that training for next week, okay? All right, so before you leave, I have a quote of the week to leave with you, okay? And this quote says, whatever makes you uncomfortable is your biggest opportunity for growth. Whatever makes you uncomfortable is your biggest opportunity for growth. Now that quote is by Bryant McGill. Okay, so with that being said, I wanna thank you all for attending the training call tonight. Peace and blessings to you. Have a blessed weekend. Have a fantastic week. And I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much, Felita. Good night. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Congratulations, Felita. On what? On your Four Piece Felita collection. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Who's that speaking? That's Joyce. Okay, Joyce. <laughs> I had the I had everything covered so I couldn't see who was actually talking. <laughs> but thank you, Miss Joyce. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Okay. You okay, y'all have a good weekend. Talk to y'all later, okay?
Bye-bye. Good night.